Hello everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and today I begin part 7 of the Ravel 132nd scale FW190 F8 that I've been working on forever. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick recap here on what's going on. Um, I am doing Black 3, this one here with the mostly bare metal finish with um, camouflage and modeling on top of that. So here's where it sits. Um, the stabilizer control surfaces and the rudders, or the rudder, uh, have been painted a red to simulate the red oxide that the original aircraft had. Um, I have also finished painting the flaps, the appropriate colors, the ailerons, camo on top, the camo color on top, and then RLM 76 on the bottom, which I'll say more about here in a minute. Um, the landing gear and doors, landing gear doors, have been painted. Again, RLM 76 on the outside, and then RLM 2 on the inside. This one's getting ready to fall off. So we'll just take it off there like that. Um, and then the prop and the prop backing plate or whatever you call it and the spinner, the fan, the wheels, flat black, NATO black for the tires. And then this part that goes inside the uh, cockpit where the canopy is. So that's been painted. So all of that is ready to go. The only stuff I have left to paint is I need to mask the canopy with the mask set that I uh, purchased. And I need to um, detail paint the tail wheel. Well, let me show you the. I forgot to show you the main part of the plane. Here's the fuselage with the mottling on the side, the sides of the aircraft. Okay. So in looking at the the uh, illustration here, I can't tell if there is mottling up here. It doesn't look, appear to be so. Just exhaust stains. So that is what I'm going to be doing on here. Um, so I need to paint around the uh, exhaust here on both sides. I need to paint the guns. I need to detail paint the, uh, the tail wheel. And uh, that should take care of the detail painting. Now, on this aircraft, if one were to ever do this, um, in doing research, there is just all kinds of conflicting what-if information and everything else. So, on the bottom, um, it is all bare metal. And there was, I had read in a few accounts, there was some speculation on the cloth control surface, the fabric control surfaces, um, if it was painted RLM 76, or was it left, or was it aluminum? I mean, obviously, uh, the aluminum color wouldn't work on the fabric control surfaces. So that's what I did, is I painted the underneath parts in RLM 76, which is pretty much standard color for uh, the lower parts of German aircraft of the era. Um, I also did the same with the landing gear doors, and I also did it on the flaps. Now the flaps, um, I believe these were aluminum metal on the real aircraft, but I went ahead and painted them just to add a little bit of difference in coloration on the bottom. I wanted to get a little bit of variety. Also on the sides here, and it worked really nicely, I used um, the Vallejo, as I mentioned in my earlier videos, the Vallejo acrylic metal color, aluminum, for the outside of the aircraft. Then for this access door here and the radio access door here, I sprayed it with the dull aluminum just to break it up since they're you know separate parts 
I wanted to kind of break up the uh, I wanted to break up the um, monotony of the color so that's what I did on that so that is where it sits right now so the next part I'm going to do I'm going to mask and paint the canopy I'm going to do the detail painting I mentioned of the guns cannons and the uh, tail wheel assembly and after that unless I've missed something I should be able to start with the decals and once I do the decals then I can start some weathering with chipping um, since I did the hairspray technique on these upper surfaces I'll be able to do some chipping around the gun base or the gun access uh, doors here and uh, you know like the walkway area here just to uh, um, you know around the edges of the gun covers there along the top edge of the cowling wherever there's activity you know hatches being opened and you know access panels being manipulated for service or whatever so I'm gonna start working on all that so next time I come back unless I run into something I need to talk about I should have all of that stuff done and I should be ready to start working on the decals all right as you can see here I have installed all of the decals top and bottom not very many on the bottom a couple of small stencils and a large um, national insignia on the wings there upper wings the sides the whole thing so the Eagle Cal brand decals I must say are very very nice they work really well and they're very tough putting on some of these larger decals um, can be a bit tricky trying to get it you know position and everything but you know I was able to pull those around with pliers or not pliers but tweezers and everything else and I did not have one of them tear um, the spinner spiral decal turned out very nice and that was a chore to put on there and that's where I really found out how tough these decals really are worked out really nice um, they didn't tear they didn't stretch nothing got them in position was able to smooth them out reposition them smooth them out reposition them put water on them pull them off you know the whole thing and it just worked great then after I got them all put in position I used some solve set on the panel line areas so they'd settle into the panel lines and the uh, tail decal or um, you know other surface detail now I want to point out these swastikas right here and something I really like about the way they do theirs now some um, manufacturers of decals will have right here it'll be the two halves of the swastika and you know it works and it's easy to do but if you don't have it lined up just exact it'll it comes out kind of cockeyed well the way they do it is they do this part is one whole decal so you can install that and you can get it lined up using your illustrations or whatever you can get it lined up properly where it's supposed to be then you just apply this part in the middle and voila you have the marking and they're thin enough that you can't tell that you put that extra part on there I mean these these decals are really really nice and the solve set really makes them settle down around like this hinge detail right here uh, the recessed rivets or screws whatever they might be and they just work really well so the decals are on the next part the only decals I have left are for the landing gear before I put those decals on I need to respray this because I goofed up and had the wrong gear on the wrong door as you can see by this kind of a ghost right here from where I painted it um, they were easily popped off thank goodness nothing broke so I was able to uh, switch them the way they're supposed to be so now I want to touch all this up and I want to make sure the edges the leading edges and lower edges are all you know nice and solid they're kind of not solid as they should be so I want to make sure that that's all uh, done properly and then once those dry then I can put the decals on then once I get those done and while those decals are drying 
what I want to do is install the lower flaps, the, um, the ailerons, the elevators, and the rudder. Get all that put into place, even the propeller. Get that done. By then, the landing gear should be dry so I can install that. And then it will all be ready for a clear coat. Now, as you can see, this is no longer covered. And what I did is I used the kit. Um, the kit canopy for the closed position because the cl there's a closed position canopy and an open position canopy. The open canopy is uh, narrower because apparently these things are really flexible and as you slid them forward they kind of locked into place. When you slid them back this would kind of relax like that. So because as you can see it doesn't doesn't fit right right there so and these have little tabs that stick in whereas these have tabs that stick down to fit down in there so what I'm going to do in order to keep from clear coat getting down in there but yet clear coat this so I can do some weathering on it I marked it to the back of this part right here I measured it and marked it using a straight edge I drew myself some lines up the side so it's nice and even and what I will do is I will cut those across and then get a piece of uh, styrene roughly cut to shape but mainly uh, flush on the bottom and glue that on there so I can glue it in place and have this part blocked in the cockpit but leave that exposed so I can do my clear coat. So I am going to spray the landing gear, start putting all those parts on, cut that, get that all ready, then I can come back and do the clear coat. Alright so this is where I am now. Um, I have so I did all the detail painting. I got the canopy done so then I went ahead and started with the um, weathering and the way I'm doing this I'm doing it a little bit different than I've done before um, I don't know if I've seen others do this before but you know maybe maybe not but what I'm doing is I'm using ultimate weathering wash and I'm right now I'm using two of the colors and that is the light dirt <coughs> I'm using on all the painted surfaces the uh, camouflage colors and then for the aluminum parts I've already done it I used the dark dirt and streaked it up all real good got it all in the nooks and crannies and so far so good so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let all this dry really well and get all that taken care of and then I'll start with like the detail weathering such as you know washes in the in the wheel wells in the landing gear uh, wells uh, smoke from the um, exhaust stains from the exhaust in the engine and uh, start working on the oil stains, other streaking, stuff like that. Um, weathering on the wheels, hubs, tires, the whole shoot and match. So while this is driving, I'm, or drying, I'm going to go ahead and quit this video here. And uh, when I come back next time, I will begin with all that stuff I just talked about. So as always, uh, thanks for joining me here. Leave any questions or comments down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any suggestions or anything I might want to look for or do. So, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude, and I will see you all next time.